welcome back to another episode of the Bulana vlog. It's spring. I tell you, I'm like so thrilled because it wasn't a heavy snow winter, but it was just cold and I think I was just bored. It, you know, um, between COVID and everything else kind of being like a shut in and not getting out that much. Not that, you know, I advocate for a return to office. I do not. I think uh, work from home is great, has great health outcomes for people, relieves stress, etc. And it's really unnecessary to report to an office. Um, the new measurement should be if the work is getting done. You know, micromanagement is the old way of doing things, and I don't think that it is beneficial to anyone. Is just a root cause of a lot of stress but anyway let's get back to the reason that um, I am doing this vlog um, as you know I'm the author of the Civil War drama Blue Honor the World War II spy thriller op deck operation deceit and the uh, dark fantasy paranormal book series the Trilokia trilogy so um, today I just wanted to talk about some of the, um, or one of the influences, one of the major influences growing up um, for me in literature. And um, I'm just probably going to hit on, you know, I mean, it's, it's very rational, the ones that I choose and have been inspired by. Um, I come from uh, British ancestry, so it makes sense for these um, icons to have filtered in and meant something to me. They're readily accessible. We're very blessed to, to have that ability to, you know, find them in every corner. And um, my parents exposed me to, the, um, to a lot of this good stuff. So like, um, as you know, Tolkien was a huge uh, influence on me. My mother read those books when she was carrying me, um, when she was pregnant for me. So, um, naturally, um, because they wanted to make sure, I've, I've spoken about my mom growing up in, in poverty, she wanted to make sure that we had access to a lot of the good things that she did not, um, and books being those. So, um, I think they tended to reach towards the most popular, um, what was most known so that they could share that with us. Um, obviously those were the things that would be gone over in school and we would be familiar with them. I can't tell you how early I saw um, a Shakespeare play. I don't know, but um, I do know that from a very early age I was able to understand his writing. You know, not everything, I mean, let's be reasonable, but I'm sitting in 10th um, grade English and everybody's going, what does that mean? And I'm like going, how do you not know what that means? It's English. <laughs> not realizing, you know, not everybody had this exposure and could um, interpret, so to speak, that old English to, to modern English and stuff because a lot of turn of phrases that he did were were not that accessible and and you know I took that for granted maybe that's my neurodivergence <laughs> um you know I tended to obsess and spend a lot of time with books and understand them but not understand people so to speak um so anyway um April is also National Poetry Month so that is why I specifically chose him I know I, I could have gone with Blake and, and some others that have really influenced me, which would be cool because, I mean, clearly, you know, I have a bachelor's degree in English and British literature was definitely, definitely my courses. <laughs> um, as I said, very much drawn to that um, because that was my culture and trying to, you know, as someone who is an American who has been pulled away from all of that um, because people left and they came to the Americas and stole land and erased cultures and their own included, um, my family had lost all of that. Like my mom didn't know exactly who she was because her father didn't claim her. So she didn't get to figure out like heritage wise from him who, 
who she was. Um, my grandmother um, knew that she had Italian heritage, but other than that, not really anything. So, I mean, it was pretty much just going off of names and things like that. It wasn't that easy before um, Ancestry and the DNA swab. So, um, anyway, National Poetry Month and Shakespeare. So, his birthday is this month. And, you know, our family number is 23. His birthday was on April 23rd, 1564. And the way that they figured that out is because, traditionally speaking, at that time, a child would be baptized three days after they were born. So that is an estimate. It doesn't mean that it is true. They're doing their best guess. And as you know, there's a lot of controversy around Shakespeare. Are we even dealing with the right guy? It could be a woman. It, it could be this. It could be that. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there that um, the bard is just like an umbrella over um, a bunch of different artists. Um, who just came under that so that there might have been multiple playwrights, etc., who were writing as Shakespeare for the Globe Theater and whatnot. But I'm kind of like, you know, maybe he was just a jackass or something and everybody wants to pull it away from him. That seems to be the thing, you know. Um, you, you find out that your heroes are not, not so mighty sometimes and um, want to pull the things away from them and, and sometimes people just like to build up others so that they can tear them down there's that too so but you know the conspiracy theories have a lot of compelling evidence too it's very interesting stuff um, I highly recommend googling all of that you know if if you like those sorts of mysteries <laughs> so um, as you know Shakespeare was the goat, greatest of all time, and um, in in the British circles, he is not the greatest of all literature ever. Let's stop right there, because there are greats in every corner of the world and every culture, and we need to give them their flowers, their laurels as well, and acknowledge them, um, being of British ancestry Welsh Irish um, he I can talk on him I can't really talk too much like um, I love Sun Tzu's The Art of War but I'm sure Sun Tzu isn't the greatest in China um, there are scholars in China who should speak on that and their voices be heard so I'm just gonna talk about my guy <laughs> um, in his influence on me. So um, everybody knows the story, you know, his parents, the Globe Theater, he had three children, his wife Anne Hathaway, and Hathaway's house in England. Um, my parents were blessed to be able to visit all that and, and to learn a little bit of history on that, which is very cool. I haven't been able to get over there and do that yet. I am a starving artist, and how I starve is I don't get vacations. I don't I have to work constantly um, to earn my keep and uh, pay the bills. So someday, um, National Poetry Month in England would be fabulous because several of the poets that I enjoy um, are British. So that would be absolutely fabulous. Um, his influence on my writing I've wanted to be a screenwriter probably as long as I've wanted to be a writer. Um, so Shakespeare showed me that you can write plays and have them put into book format and have them read. That's my laundry and I'm not going to stop talking. <laughs> um, I was waiting for that beep to go off this whole time. Like, should I, should I tape this or should I not? Hmm. Anyway, so his influence on me was to show me that the play, in the format of the play, can be good literature. Um, a screenplay can be written well and be a piece of literature that you can read. Not every screenplay is. A lot of them that I have looked at are um, very bare bones, and if you didn't have the film, you would probably be like, I, I can't see this. It just is so bare. 
Um, and that's the nature of it because um, the director, I'm sorry about all the ums, the director has a vision and the writer is not supposed to be putting their vision down on paper. It's a bone of contention between these two roles. Uh, the writer is an architect of the film. They write all the stuff that has to be fleshed out, etc. But if the director is also the screenwriter, you might get a little bit more. If the screenwriter is not the director, you'll probably get a little bit less. Um, but these roles can butt heads. So too with actors, like too many parentheticals and directions, etc. From, from the writer. That's the writer trying to be the director instead of letting the director do their job. And there's just a, a bunch of things like that. But I wanted to read to you some Shakespeare. Um, Love's Labor Lost. And it's the very opening. It's uh, the king's lines. So enter the king. And he says, Let fame that all hunt after in their lives live registered upon our brazen tombs and then grace us in the disgrace of death. When spite of cormorant devouring time, the endeavor of this present breath may buy that honor which shall bait his scythe's keen edge and make us heirs of all eternity. Therefore, brave conquerors, for so you are. Love's labor lost. And I'm sure y'all recognize this. This is like... I think this was a Borders buy. It could have been a and m buy. I have to check in the front here. But this is my well-worn cracked copy. You can see how it just hangs there like that. Um, it is illustrated. There are panels in each. It's a beautiful leather-bound copy. And it is everything. Everything that Shakes did, Bill. Um, it's like a Bible. That's why I was having a little bit of a hard time reading that because the print, it's like a Bible. I swear. Let me show you this page. <laughs> In order to fit everything into here, because he wrote so much, it's like a Bible. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, mainly his um, influence on me, but also the way that he so clearly painted the image and... Um, the description through dialogue. And he may be why my dialogue is so strong because basically what you're reading is the conversations. There's not a lot of description in the plays. Um, there's a scene set up that is extremely brief as in screenplays as well. But most of what you're learning and what is happening is within the conversation and the context that is established by that <laughs> and not description. It's awesome, you know? Um, so I think he helped me be a stronger dialogue writer. He helped me to understand that a play can be literature and to write well within that. He inspired me with his use of language. Um, I don't think anyone until Truman Capote um, really struck me as this is amazing, amazing writing. So that's it. So National Poetry Month, read yourself some Shakespeare. You should, um, you should go out and look up more details about him, um, including those conspiracies. I'm sure there's some videos floating around um, on YouTube about those. It's a lot of fun to dive into and watch a play. Um, if you haven't seen the David Tennant Hamlet, I recommend it. David does an amazing job in Shakespeare. Not only is he probably the second best doctor, I'm sorry, number four is my favorite, David. <laughs> he always will be, love you. But, um, you know, it's just amazing. And if you get a chance, Tom Hiddleston has done some as well that you can watch. And it's fabulous. There's a lot of modern actors that you can watch um, that have done Shakespeare and have gotten it onto film. 
so that you can experience that and you'll be able to um, stream that on uh, any one of the apps. Thank you. And uh, please be back here in May. Uh, let me check real quick. I can tell you. We'll be talking about the quotes at the opening of the Trilogia books and why I chose those quotes. So I'll see you back. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.